Hey guys, Ewan here, and in this video, we're gonna check what the 90s bodybuilders are doing right now in 2020. I made a couple of videos like this about Dorian, about Kevin Leveroni, about Milo Sharch, Ronnie Coleman, and Jay Cutler so far. And you guys seem to like those videos, and if you haven't watched them, go ahead and watch them now. But right now, in this video, we're gonna focus on the other bodybuilders, the ones that I haven't made a video about. So, we're gonna check where they are, how do they look, what their physiques look like, do they still train, what are they all about, do, are they even alive or dead? So let's go, let's start with the first one and that's gonna be Paul Dillette. I'm sure you've seen this photo before in those bodybuilders have to retire videos, but this was quite a few years ago, he doesn't look like this anymore, not the way he looked on the photo on the right and most certainly not on the photo on the left. And this is what Paul Dillette looks like today, in 2020. He is into fashion, actually. He's actually the president of the WBFF, which stands for, obviously, the World Beauty, Fitness and Fashion. So today, Paul Dillette is a tall, skinny fashion guy, not a monster that he once was. Speaking of monsters, what about this guy right here, standing next to Paul Dillette and somehow managing to make Paul look small? Paul Dillette was, and still is, one of the biggest freaks of all time. The combination of that small waist and insanely, insanely big arms and shoulders really made him stand out and seem like one of the biggest guys ever in bodybuilding. The amount of muscle that he carried was insane for somebody of his height. He was very tall, actually. But standing next to this guy, he didn't seem that impressive. Is it because of the posing? Marcus Rule was an extremely good poser, I mean, he really knew how to make himself look like a, an absolute freak, a monster. While Paul was probably the worst poser of all time. But that's not really the point of this video, the point is uh, what these bodybuilders are looking like right now. So Marcus Rule, take a look at him here. A freak, an absolute freak, one of the biggest, probably the biggest freak of all time. If you don't like crazy mass and this kind of nasty, freaky, monsterish physiques, you're not a fan of his. But if you are, if you like that kind of stuff, then you are his biggest fan because it doesn't get more freaky than this. It does not. But don't worry, he did not lose all the muscle like Paul Dillette did. This is him right now. He's actually pretty big. He's actually pretty big. He doesn't have the proportions, the lines or the condition that he once had, but he's not small. He is still training very hard, very actively, I'm sure he's eating and he's using the supplements and everything, but it's just the old age, of course. These physiques are not forever. They don't last forever, you cannot use uh, all the supplements forever, and uh, your body just, you know, starts crumbling eventually. And it happened to him, of course, as it's gonna happen to all of us. But he still kept a lot of muscle, he's still into bodybuilding, he didn't give up on it like Paul Glad, for example, and he still looks pretty big and pretty freaky. But there is footage of him, the way he once was, and that is going to be there forever. Here is Milo Sharchev, and you can check a video about him, a separate video only about him. But unfortunately, there isn't one about Nasser or somebody, this bodybuilder on the right, right here, because uh, he passed away in 2013. So he's one of those bodybuilders from the 90s who didn't live to see the new, the new decade. So rest in peace, Nasser or somebody. There are also other guys who didn't uh, live past the 90s like uh, Andreas Munzer right here, who died in 1996 due to electrolyte disbalance, I believe he tried to dehydrate himself too much, and he was the most shredded man alive, but he died. A year before that, in 1995, another legend of 90s bodybuilding died due to heroin overdose. Did bodybuilding cause him to become a heroin addict? It's possible, but nobody knows, it's not bodybuilding that killed him, it was heroin overdose. Mike Materazzo, another legend of 90s, died one year after Nasser al somebody in 2014 and the same reason why Nasser died, cardiovascular disease or a heart attack. I showed you this photo before and I'm sure you recognize Lee Priest, of course, he's a very popular guy and we're gonna mention him in a moment, but do you know who is that behind him, doing the front double bicep, behind Lee Priest who is doing the crucifix pose? I think on the right there, is that Kevin Leveroni? And on the left, that could be Dexter Jackson. But the man doing the front double bicep behind Lee Priest is Gunter Schlierkamp. Gunter was another tall bodybuilder, just like Paul Dillette and Marcus Roll, And he was the only bodybuilder that was able to beat Ronnie Coleman 
after he became the Mr. Olympia in 1998 and uh, before he was dethroned by Jay Cutler in 2006. I believe it was 2003 where he beat Ronnie Coleman in a Brazil. I'm not sure which competition it was. Was it Arnold Classic Brazil or something like that? You tell me if you know. But apparently Gunter beat him. Later that year, the Mr. Olympia Gunter was allegedly robbed extremely. They didn't let him get close to Ronnie because they didn't want to see him even compared. So he was like sixth or something. Anyways, Gunter right now looks like this. He still has some muscle. The biceps are kind of there. The triceps, not really. They were never his strong point. Even back then, the chest is there. But overall, he lost a lot of weight normally. He still does have that smile, that enthusiasm and charisma that he always had. He was always, you know, smiling. He was always in good mood, at least seemingly. And it seems like uh, he's still that kind of guy. He didn't hold on to the size like Marcus Rule, for example. But he looks healthy, unlike Rule. He's 50. He's 50. His face looks like he's 40 or maybe even less than that. So props to him. Right here in this photo, you can see him standing next to Ronnie Common, of course, and Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier, one of the most genetically gifted bodybuilders of all time, especially of the 90s. He was extremely strong and he wasn't really trying that hard. I mean, sure, you don't become a bodybuilding legend by an accident. I'm sure he trained extremely hard and did everything else, but he liked to party. He was a party man. He would go out on weekends and he would use a lot of recreational drugs. They say he would immediately take his shirt off and started dancing with girls and so on. Here you can see him actually on a party with Dorian Yates. And Dorian actually did his fair share of partying after he retired, but not while he was competing. Unlike Chris, who never really stopped. And right now, Chris Cormier, the real deal, so-called, is one of the top trainers. He is actually in the auction gym in Kuwait and he is one of their top trainers. He is the coach of the classic physique Mr. Olympia two times, Brion Ainsley. He is the coach of uh, Rolly Winkler right here. He is also the coach of Sergio Oliva Jr., who is doing the Arnold Classic in about five weeks. So we'll see what can he make of him. So yeah, he, he is doing uh, great in terms of bodybuilding even today. He's still in the industry. He's a big part of it. You can see him very often uh, with other bodybuilders at the expos, at the competitions and so on. So Chris Cormier is still a part of the community and he's one of the top trainers. Here on this photo you can see him standing next to Ronnie Coleman, the best of all time, and actually holding his ground. On the right, right there you can see Flex Wheeler as well. And I'm sure most of you guys already know by now, I made several videos about this. Flex Wheeler had a leg amputation surgery. His uh, right leg from knee below was uh, amputated and so he's right now trying to learn how to walk with prosthetics. But in 2017 he made a comeback at the Classic Physique Mr. Olympia stage. And he looked really good, he looked in shape. Nowhere near as big as he once was. But this was Classic Physique, it wasn't bodybuilding. For Classic Physique he was actually pretty big and he was in good shape. And this was only three years ago, so I'm sure as soon as Flex learns how to function properly with prosthetics, he can get back into this shape easily. I'm sure it's not a problem for him. This guy has probably the best genetics for bodybuilding of all time. Lee Hain is an eight times Mr. Olympia champion, but he competed mainly during the 80s. He won the 90 Mr. Olympia, the 91 as well. In 92, he retired, Dorian took over, so he competed two years during the 90s. So it's worth mentioning him, since he is the 8-time Mr. Olympia champion. What he looks like right now, you cannot really see. He never really posts a physique update. It looks like he's in a decent shape for his age and he's quite old. But as you can see right here, he looks healthy, he looks happy. He retired very early on when he was young, so I'm sure his health is still pretty good. Would you believe that he's actually 60 right now? He doesn't look 60. Dorian looks older than him and Dorian is 57. So props to, props to Lee. He, he gave up on bodybuilding when he was young and I'm sure that's the reason why he kept his health and why he looks like this right now. One of the biggest freaks during the 90s also Jean-Pierre Fuchs, who actually could rival Dorian in terms of back development and overall mass. One of the few guys never really managed to bring the conditioning to that top fine level and that was mainly because he was messing with the peak week protocols and he didn't really know what he was doing. He was talking about it in the interviews. He was basically trying to carb load, sodium deplete and so on. And he would always end up either flat or too full, spilled over, something like that. Nonetheless, he will be remembered as one of the top guys, one of the biggest freaks of the 90s. Here you can see him curling some weights. 
And this was not uh, 2019 or 2020. This was a few years ago. And he looks similar to this right now. But here you can see he still has the size. He still looks pretty impressive. And he looks pretty healthy as well. These arms are looking pretty big, which were kind of his weakness, he claims. And overall, he looks really good. He looks in good shape. Forearms are looking huge. Traps are there. It's a nice structure. At least it was a couple of years ago. And I'm sure he was on something right here because now he looks much skinnier and probably much fatter as well. Look at the chins right there. He looks a little bit chubby and his arms look much smaller, much smaller. And everything else pretty much. So I'm sure he stopped using higher dosages. He may have had some problems and that's the reason why. But anyways, enough about the big guys. Let's mention two more guys, two more smaller little guys from the 90s, top bodybuilders as well. So first of all, we have Sean Ray. What is Sean Ray looking like right now? He's a little bit chubby, he's a little bit fat, but he's still a valuable part of the industry, the fitness industry, the bodybuilding industry. He has his own show, Sean Ray's Hawaiian Classic, and this is the, the winner of 2019, I believe. So Sean, I think he lives there. Not sure about that, but I think so. Anyways, he's a part of the community. He's always into bodybuilding, he's doing the interviews, he's actually commentator the Mr. Olympia. So in terms of bodybuilding business, he's doing great. But you can always see him drinking these cocktails. Standing there or sitting usually on a beach or wherever and having fun drinking cocktails. And that's the way he likes his lifestyle right now. He doesn't care about being in shape, he doesn't want to be lean. He has this chubby body right now, he's quite fat, you can see it in his face especially compared to what it once was, he definitely added a lot of body fat, he was really lean, but as a businessman, he, he's there, you know, as a showman and businessman, he, he's always there, some people like him very much, some people hate him, I like his strong opinions, but sometimes he manages to piss me off as well, but he is very opinionated and he has a lot of experience in this field and he knows how to talk. He knows how to talk. I'm sure he read a lot of books and he has this gift. He's a really good speaker. Unlike many other active and retired bodybuilders, he has a personality. He can speak and I respect that. As far as his physique, he's pretty fat, he's pretty chubby, not very impressive physique, not at all. And now we're gonna see what his rival, his biggest rival from the 90s, aside from Dorian Yates of course, Another 212 potentially guy. Back in the day, they didn't have a 212, but if there was 212 division, two shorter guys were Lee Priest, for example, and Sean Ray. Lee Priest had some really strong body parts, like his arms, but Sean Ray was a little bit more complete bodybuilder. So it's questionable who would, uh, who would be better in the 212, but as far as placing at the Mr. Olympia, Sean Ray was much better than Lee Priest. Anyways, Lee Priest today, what he looks like. Well, it's about something like this. He tattooed his entire body, basically, and that's probably why he had a melanoma on his uh, eyelid that required a surgical operation. But if we talk about his physique, he still has really impressive arms and forearms. A lot of tattoos, a lot of tattoos. His entire body, basically, is covered in tattoos. But he has the muscle. He still has the muscle. Maybe like five, six, seven years ago, I think it was 2013, he had a comeback, which was actually very successful. Now, he's a little bit too old for that, but he looks impressive. For, for a guy of his age, for a 47-year-old, he has very big arms, bigger than probably most of you guys watching this. Is that uh, Sintel? Maybe? Or not? <laughs> that's a questionable and probably a topic for a different video. But that's gonna be the last bodybuilder for this video. So basically now, guys, if you wanted to see what 90s bodybuilders are doing right now and how they're looking, this is it. Some of them died, some of them are still alive. If you wanted to check videos about Jay Cutler, Ronnie Coleman, Milo Sharchev, Kevin Levroni, you can check them out on my channel. They are all separate videos about these guys. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more bodybuilding content like this. All the best, guys, and bye-bye.